May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I would like to welcome you to Sherburne United Church of Christ June 26th worship service. Uh, to let you know, I will be on uh, face or on Zoom following our uh, premiere service, which will mean I'll be on about 10:30. Blessed be God, whose word gives hope and shapes our dreams, whose love has conquered death. Blessed be God, who orders our way and guides our steps who leads us into life. Let us pray. God, you have given us a dream of your world made whole, a heavenly realm that is near in heart and close at hand. And it is ours to choose each day. May our smallest acts of courtesy, when transformed by your love, grow abundantly into a realm of flourishing for all. Amen. Will you join me in lighting a candle if you have one nearby? Kind of as a way in which we can show our unity in our faith. Today's reading comes from Matthew 13, 31 through 33, and 44 through 52. The Parable of the Mustard Seed. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that all the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. The Parable of the Yeast He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The Three Parables The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. And then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great worth, he went and sold all he had, and he bought it. And the kingdom of heaven is like a net that is thrown into the sea and caught every fish of every kind. And when it is full, they drew it to shore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Treasures old and new. Have you understood all of this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of the household who brings out of his treasures what is new and what is old. This ends our reading. Our readings today is actually a collection of small little sayings of Jesus' about what it is the kingdom is like and you know the very first one the one about the mustard seed we all recognize that one probably and and we understand that that little mustard seed represents how small our faith really needs to be to have a tremendous impact not only in our lives by growing into this this big plant but also by those around us. Place of rest for the birds, shade for maybe other animals. We also heard in the next one about the yeast and its impact. How just a little yeast can truly change this pile of flour 
to rise it, to make it grow, to get bigger, and be able to make bread. Our faith, we struggle with it all the time. I do. I struggle with mine. But yet, just that little bit, especially if it's nurtured and cared for, cultivated, needed, given time, will grow and rise to something that can truly have an impact and value for others. The church is a wonderful place that can allow us a place for our faith to grow. Church is far more than just a place to gather and worship, important though that is. And it's more than a place where we can get together with friends and family and share our lives. Well, that might be an important thing too. It is also and should always be a place where our faith, our spirit, can grow. The church needs to help foster that, to be a place where it can cultivate, a place that maybe encourages it with a little needing for it to rise and become a thing that not only fills us, but can help change others. The church is to be a place of true transformation where lives are changed, where people find new hope in a world that sometimes seems like it's hopeless. The church is a place that we can cultivate that little bitty seed. And it's also a place where we can get prodded and needed to help us grow and build. We're called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Our discipleship is a way in which we not only allow our faith to grow, but it's a way in which we help bring that faith to others. In the story or the parable or the saying of Jesus's, it talks about finding a pearl and selling everything and buying finding a treasure in land, selling all you have and going buying that land. Talks about how do we find those places that help us to grow and how do we invest in them. And I don't mean just so that the church can pay its bills, but how do we invest into these places like the church so that they may continue to be rich places for people of faith to grow and be nurtured and find ways to share their faith so that others may take their mustard seed of faith and let it be cultivated so that it grows and becomes a haven for others. This is a cycle that we're supposed to be living into. It's not just come to church, have some worship, feel good about yourself. It's a place that we can come and find haven, but it's also a place where we should come and be needed. And I don't mean N-E-E-D-E-D, K-N-E-A-D. How do we get needed? How do we get sometimes even punched to be encouraged to rise to something new and something better? My grandmother used to make bread twice a week. I can remember her doing that. She would work hard to do it. And that pile of flour with that little bit of yeast with some care, some time, it being needed and allowed to grow and then maybe punched 
a little bit to be allowed to grow even more. The church is a place where we truly should and can develop our faith and help others develop their faith. Let's take our faith, even if it's as small as a mustard seed, and nurture it and allow it to grow so that it can be a place for others. Look at these little stories again that we just found in Matthew and find ways maybe it can speak to us as how we need to be, how God is calling us to be, how truly the church is a place to be. Now, I, I really believe that the church should be far more than just a place. It really needs to be an action. Maybe we need to take it from being a noun to becoming a verb. We church. Church. We church ourselves. We church others to grow in their faith that little seed may grow into this wonderful plant. That pile of flour may rise to become a loaf of bread that can feed the world. The possibilities truly are endless, maybe as endless as God's capability. For when we couple our, our faith, our desires, our hopes with God's calling. The possibilities are beyond our imagination. Open yourself to that wondrous possibility that only God can help us find. Amen. Next week, instead of giving you the scriptures for next week, we are going to open our doors again. Since the, we closed them for the, during the COVID pandemic. But I would like to encourage those who feel safe to come. For those who are not comfortable yet in gathering together, that is absolutely fine. I want you to be safe. I don't want you to risk anything. But I also want you to know that we will be continuing to make messages and worship together available online. Whether it's going to be recorded like these I have been, or whether it'll be live streaming once we get things moving again. Over this next week, pray for us. Pray that what decisions we make may be the right ones. And I will pray that what decisions you make are the right ones for you. Let us truly come to God with hearts open to prayer. Let us pray. Holy and wondrous God, we are on a journey of becoming and do not fully know how to pray. Yet, the Spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Therefore, let us offer our prayers confident that the Spirit prays in us and through us according to God's will. For you, O oh holy God, you have blessed humanity with understanding and the ability to choose the good. Give to all leaders and people a vision of your world made whole, the wisdom to pursue it and the will to accomplish it. 
You have given your world the gift of Jesus to transform our suffering into healing and hope. Be with us as we all suffer hardships, distress, or need, and help us to honor you by serving together as we grow in the mercy and compassion of Christ. You blessed us with the gift of creation and call us to uphold its purpose for declaring your holy splendor. Join us with the Spirit's movement in caring for this world as together we await our redemption from glory into glory. We give thanks for the gift of hope that never ends and that we are more than victors through him who love him. Remember, we remember all who have died and give thanks that nothing can separate us from you. O triune God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, be with us. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God has given you the gift of discernment to resist evil, to choose what is good, and to guide your feet in the way of peace. And now may God, the God of creation, the God of liberation, the God of illumination, bless you this day and always. Amen.
Sweet us through this night.